mortality and uh, infant mortality are very high. And to us in Lagos State, this is unacceptable. And I think it's the same thing at the federal level because that's why a lot of governments, both at the federal and the states, are looking, out to, looking into ways of uh, reducing these um, rates drastically. And I do know that for us in Lagos State, we want to see these rates down as quickly and as fast as possible. But I must say that um, one of the problems is that, I mean, a lot of these figures are figures that were given to us from external agencies and that kind of thing. Um, we in Lagos State just decided at least let us get our own figures as baseline. And then we have strategies that we've put in place basically to address the major causes of these poor rates. Maybe we should go into the causes of this yeah. of these figures that we have. Well, for maternal mortality, um, the best way I would love to address that has to do with what uh, some schools of thought call the three delays. Delays in the sense that the first one, delay number one, is that the people generally, especially pregnant women, generally do not even understand, appreciate the signs of uh, problems in pregnancy for many factors. It could be due to lack of information, it could be due to ignorance, it could be due to the fact that they don't even have the wherewithal to seek help. That is a major one. And to address that delay, it basically has to do with proper sensitization of the pregnant women or the people, and that's public education. The second delay has to do with that even they know they have problems, they don't know where to go to. They don't know where to go to for many reasons. Perhaps maybe issue of transportation, or they don't know where the health facilities are, or there are no health facilities at all. Or, and that's why a lot of people tend to go to the traditional healers and that kind of thing. So, our strategy has to do with increasing access of these people to healthcare facilities to help. And the last one is that even if they know, even if they know where the facilities are, one of the major reasons is that a lot of these women come down with complications because they believe this is too much and they don't get attended to by skilled workers. Which comes with the issue of actually raising the quality of care and getting facilities that have the correct equipment, the right equipment and the right caliber of staff. So those are the delays. And of course, in this environment, the major causes of that, I mean, a pregnant woman comes out with hemorrhage as it's bleeding during pregnancy, so many causes. It can come up with what we call eclampsia, and eclampsia basically is a, a pregnant woman who is pregnant suddenly develops hypertension, and then if care is not taken, she starts fitting, going into convulsion. This is a major, and once it starts, it starts it's uh, dangerous for her health, and also it also affects the health of the baby within her. That's one of the common cause. Malaria is another common cause. Look at malaria in pregnancy because it affects the woman, it also affects the child. Um, abortion is a common cause. Uh, abortion and basically is rampant, especially younger generations, where they, they are possibly not properly handled by skilled health workers, so they can have all sorts of compli complications. Infection is a common cause. So, so many causes. I mean, and and all those causes were based due to some of the underlying factors I mentioned to you. And what we've done in Lagos is to design strategies to actually address a lot of this. Okay, maybe before <coughs> we go into the, the strategies that, that you have in place, mm. let me take the first delay. You said um, women don't even know. What does mm. that say about um, reproductive health education? Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's a major problem. Um, that's, and a lot of women who come on that are people, the uneducated ones, or the poor people, it means that the education is not there. And that's why I said that one major way of addressing that is enlightening the people. People should know what the signs of pregnancies are, what the danger signs of pregnancies are. Maybe you should mention some of them now. Danger signs of pregnancy, you could have, I mean, if you are pregnant, all of a sudden, I mean, you go to a hospital, you start bleeding, or you start spotting. These are, these are signs. You start, you get I mean, high blood pressure, you get dizzy, all sorts of, these are signs uh, that, that uh, tell, 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 tell you that something is wrong 
or pregnancy is prolonged for whatever reason, you are supposed to feel you are supposed to have delivered at a particular time. It, 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 it doesn't come, and you start having all sorts of discharges down there. So, means if you once you start feeling funny, or feeling, I mean, not normal. I mean, pregnancy itself is a physiological state. It's not. I won't call it abnormal, but it is done in normal process of things, and it affects different parts of the body. And that's why people advocate that during pregnancy, any pregnant woman should try to attend antenatal care. Because during that period, a number of parameters are checked on the body, basic things, that if they are not normal, they are pointers to, that, uh, to the fact that something definitely is wrong. And so, um, I mean, when you are pregnant, I mean, the various signs of pregnancy, you can start vomiting and that kind of, but with the vomiting, it becomes excessive. You start having fever, inf I mean, it could be to infection. So many things that are danger signs. And, um, and the public or the pregnant women need to understand this danger. And that's why part of that health education is that you need to, whatever means possible, to address the people, to let them know what the danger signs are why they should attend and she care. I mean, it's very, very clear. Because that's the only time you can know, during that care, you know the progress of pregnancy, and you can even know when something is not going, going wrong or something is not right. Do that, do, do that. <clears throat> okay, okay, maybe we should just go to, to the second one. You say sometimes they don't even know where to go. Yeah. Because perhaps they have gone to the primary health care center and there's, maybe they find one nurse, there's no doctor, how how does this also affect you know the health of the of the woman? No, I mean I mean it it affects the health of the woman negatively, and it's also it's just bordering on the what you call access to care, and basically it could be due to infrastructure, it could be due to human resource problems. I mean the health workforce, it could be due to financial problems, and access has many dimensions. One, the facilities available may not be enough. And if they are not enough, they may be too far away from the people to access them. And so government has to do something to even address that. That's due to physical access. You may have the facility, you may not have the road or where we talk to even access things. So that issues that have especially in part of a rural area, there's so many people who live in remote areas of Ghana to even access that either whether because the riverland area or hard to reach area. These are Areas that government needs to come into to address to make it easier for people. For them. So people will be just due to poverty. Uh, somebody who is not working, doesn't have any serious means of livelihood, and falls ill or has this kind of problems, and he doesn't, she, he or she doesn't have the money to even go to the facility, and she tends to stay at home or visit the nearest traditional button. Is that busy? So it behoves on government to develop strategies to address some of these costs to make it easier for people to access health I mean, the health care facility. And that's why the need for build a system either from the grassroots, that is the primary health care centers, not only build not just the structure. Not only structures, as I'm saying, the model properly staffed. Staffed, adequate staffing for people to cater for so that they don't need to even leave that place except for things they cannot handle. And this is one reason why the state government is they more emphasis on revitalizing the primary health care system. And uh, this we are doing in stages because, of course, resources available are limited. And uh, for financial access, the poverty, it's also the government's uh, responsibility to give that protection to those poor people. And this is why initially the state government is talking about free health. We also know the problems we are having with free health. Yes, and because I was going to ask, is the uh, um, is the health service for pregnant women and children free in Lagos State? We try as much as well to make it free, but again, we need to be realistic with ourselves. The resources available are not enough to even cover. Okay, so it is whole. not so free. Not, not totally free. We try to target all so for things like uh, antenatal care. Normal pregnant care are free. Just access that. Now, even the children under five is free. Um, but I must warn though that. As much well as the intention of government is there, the way we thought to effect that, if you weigh that against the population, the enormous people we need to cater for, you feel that there is inadequacy there. And that's why we are looking towards the issue of health insurance, especially targeting those poor people, the community based insurance. We are working out a program along that line. How long will that take? Right now, we are piloting in three local government areas. And that pilot is to 
give us an, uh, uh, an idea of the kind of challenges we need to face so that we can refine our strategies to be able to make it, uh, get it um, uh, 